to get some real estate, but the bank keeps saying no. I can't get my investment business started because the bank is kicking me in the balls. Jay Wise, can you help me get started when banks are like, F this guy. Yeah, yeah, I can. Let's do it. I'm doing it for my client from Maryland. Let's go. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I am James Wise. I help people like you get started in real estate. Today is a special day for you, Terry. My dude, Terry. Investor from Stevensville, Maryland. I got a special treat for you today, Terry. I got some seller financing for you, dog. Now, here's our situation. And I'm sure a lot of the other people out there in fucking internet land are watching this show. And they're like, hey, this sounds like me. I fucking love Terry. Terry's my kind of guy, right? Here's your situation, Terry. Your lender's a fucking prick, man. Fuck your lender. He sucks, right? Your lender's been jerking you around, jerking me around. He's like, oh, I can't do this deal. Oh, I can't do this. Fuck your lender, dude. Your lender is no good, okay? You got a garbage lender. You've been working to try to get some other lenders. But, hey, uh, you've had issues in the past with credit. So, uh, you're, you're uh, you know, you're you're stuck working with some tougher, tougher lenders, man, and they're jerking you around. So, what did James do? James came in and wanted to shift gears. You haven't looked at a property like this, but, hey, your situation right now isn't so much finding you a property you're interested in. I've showed you several properties you're interested in, but you can't seem to get the financing put together. So I got one that's coming equipped with financing from a seller who's also got a problem, right? You both have a problem. Your problem is you can't seem to get financing squared away. This guy's problem is he's got a number he wants for his building. And you know what? It's a good building. I love a few things about it. I'll get into those later. But he can't seem to get the market to give him his numbers. So I'm going to solve his problem by solving your problem. And we're going to do the whole thing right now. Man, I hate those other real estate gurus out there. Those real estate gurus that lead you guys to believe fairy tales. Lead you guys to believe in magic. Lead you guys to think that there's going to be genies granting your wishes if you buy their course or their program. Like there's going to be hot girls in bikinis just popping out. That's not the real life of a real estate investor. And here on Holton Wise TV, we give it to you straight. Welcome back, folks. Now we are going to pull up this property, right? We're combining a couple of my favorite things here with this particular one, right? We're combining uh, quite a few things that are my favorite. What's not my favorite is all the smudges on my glasses, man. I got I got little kids at home, right? Two and one. They're a little... They're little grubby hands jacking up all my glasses all the time. But, hey, I love them. Anyway, let's get back to the real estate. This ain't the family fun hour. Let's talk about money. 46 Middle Avenue, Elyria, Ohio, 44035. Priced at $194,000. This thing's been on the market for, like, five months. That's awesome. Now, this combines several things that I like, right? Combined seller financing, right? That's what you're all here for. You're all here to get that seller financing. The bank told you you can't get a loan? Fuck them! All right? We can get you set up. You don't need a bank to buy this property. We're going to get you set up, and I'm going to walk you through that. Second thing I really love is warehouse space, dude. One of these units is a warehouse. I have done very well with warehouse space, right? You got that garage door, you're getting a premium in rent. Your vacancy is going to be low. Honestly, it feels like it's one of the most in-demand things to rent. Now, this show is all about giving it to you straight, folks. I don't like to, to give you the fluff. I ain't the, the real estate genie granting fucking wishes, okay? This is reality. I'm going to be real with you. This right here, this is the other unit. First unit, that's a warehouse. You're going to have incredible demand. That thing will rent itself. Now, this is a church. These sons of bitches are hard to rent, y'all. They're hard to rent, okay? I ain't going to lie to you. Uh, it might take, you know, three, four, five, six months to actually get us a church tenant. And then when you do get church tenants, there ain't a lot of money in these little storefront churches, okay? So they may not last that long. At some point, we may honestly want to consider just gutting out this space 
uh, cutting a hole into the wall outside and turn it into another warehouse like this one, right? Warehouse, basically no maintenance, and you always have a high demand, right? So uh, just gutting out the space may be better. Um, you may even want to just turn it into a single warehouse so you don't even have to gut it out. Or maybe you can get like a warehouse-type tenant that wants to use the church as their office space, right? Uh, the moral of the story is churches, not amazing tenants. Warehouses, great tenants. But I got to, you know, give you the good with the bad. Now, here's where I'm at as far as the numbers. Oh, last thing I love, by the way. I didn't even get into the last thing I love. Before we go to the numbers, the last thing I love, I love that we got seller financing, one. I love that we have a warehouse, two. The third thing I love is the location, Elyria, Ohio. Now, we work the Cleveland market. A lot of people come to us for Cleveland, but that doesn't mean just the city of Cleveland. The city of Cleveland is like 350,000 strong. The metro area, the Cleveland metro area, we operate is several million strong, okay? I happen to like the city of Elyria much better than the city of Cleveland. I think our returns are higher. I think the government's easier to deal with. So that is a plus. Love this neighborhood. Solid CB grade neighborhood. Now, on to the numbers. That warehouse, we'll rent that bad boy for fifteen hundo. Easy, no problem. The church, probably gonna get like seven fifty out of that unit. But again, we may have some vacancy up front. They are they are difficult uh, to rent. There's not like a million people like, no, I want to open my church, right? Just it is what it is, right? Now, if we get that, the two thousand two hundred fifty, what I believe our monthly. Uh, numbers will look like 2250 comes in i believe you guys will spend a little over a thousand having my company manage it right leaving you with a pure noi of one thousand one hundred eighty eight sixty seven or a little bit over fourteen thousand for the year now through this i got your taxes your insurance your water bill no lawn care here no grass we'll have the warehouse tenant take care of that your pm fee to have my team handle it if you look on the repairs and maintenance much lower than what you guys are used to seeing uh, with my estimates here, right? It's usually about the same as your vacancy and your non-payment and your capex. Here's the cool thing with commercial tenants. Commercial tenants like this, especially the warehouse, there ain't nothing you got to do inside, right? It's not like an apartment where you got to repaint it and do shit like that. You don't have to mess with it. Now, you do have to occasionally move people's crap out, like when they, uh, they leave and you get a turnover. So we did calculate a little bit of money, but the majority of what you have to do as a landlord on a property like this is just deal with the overall structure, which is why you see your capital expenditure budget much higher, right? And that goes over things like the roof. But good news on this one, the roof is only five years old. That roof's going to last you at least another 30 years, okay? Now, on to the next thing, the money. How do the numbers work out? Well... We're going to be making approximately, like I said, we'll pop the chart back up, around 14 Gs a year on this thing. But we're going to finance it, and we're going to finance it via owner financing. Now, this is sitting on the market four or five months. This guy wants 194000 Logic would dictate we try to give him a lower offer than that, right? That's what you're probably thinking. Like, no, oh, nobody else is buying that 194 Let's give him a low offer. No, we don't want to do that. We're trying to get them to finance this deal, folks. My opinion, what I've done in my career, what I've done uh, to be successful, I have, I've probably got, I don't know, $5 million worth of uh, owner finance notes out there. And I have built uh, a large portion of my portfolio through owner financing. What I've always found is you can really work out the best deals if you can get your seller that number that they've been looking for. He's trying to get this number, and he ain't getting it. Let's give him the number. Let's give him his price so we can make up for it by naming our terms, right? You're trying to get owner financing. Here's the deal. Go ahead and just Google seller financing. What you're going to find is all kinds of content teaching buyers how to get seller financing. It ain't ever teaching sellers how to get seller financing. So if you're getting seller financing and you're the buyer, guess what? You're the one getting something that is hard to get, right? Most sellers want to sell it for cash, right? So you're already going to win the deal by getting seller financing. So what I say is we offer Homeboy his price that he can't seem to get anywhere else, 194000 and then we try to just kick him traditional residential terms. 30 years, fully amortized, 3% interest, 25% down. That'd mean we put down 48 and a half. He finances out 145 and a half. That would kick this uh, investment off to a 14.2% estimated return. That would be sweet. That would be like best case scenario if that happened. But I believe 
more likely he's going to give a little bit of pushback, right? But we already gave him his number, so he's feeling that. I think he'll probably come back. I don't think he'll want to finance it for the full 30 years. We might be able to work in like a 30-year amp, 10-year call, 5-year call. He may want to increase the interest up to 4 or 5 or something like this or that, right? And he may push back on the down payment, right? These are all things we're going to have to get in and negotiate with him, right? But we should start from a place where we get – something amazing right we get a full 30-year note from a seller that'd be great at like market level stuff but in reality you're probably gonna need to pay a premium and that's not even market level for commercial space right the commercial space you're definitely almost never getting 30-year terms like that so it's a good starting point but we're starting things off with the seller on a very good page because we are giving the seller what he really wants and he can't get anywhere else which is his number and if you're trying to do a seller finance deal, it's incredibly important to create a win-win, right? Because he has got all the cards, right? So let's see what we can do by starting the negotiation off on a good foot. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.